Over the last six months, I have been working on my home theater. It's just been trial and error to get, you know, the right match of components to go well with one another. As I have gladly accepted the Appearing Audio Varus line of speakers for my front sound stage and rear surrounds, I have also integrated two 15-inch subwoofers to provide all the low end I could possibly want. <laughs> the first one I brought in is the uh, Velodyne Deep Blue 15, which I have done a review, and you can actually find that right here. I've done a review of it. The second one, and the one we will be discussing today, is the SW15 by Stark Sound. I have been using a Stark Sound Class D amplifier in my two channel system for over a year and have had much success with it. So I felt confident you know, that the subwoofers weren't going to disappoint. At a price point of only $8.99 and even more affordable during the periodic sales they run, I felt this would be you know, an amazing opportunity to put it to the test. To see if not only the subwoofer lives up to the Stark name, which over the last couple years has been gaining a lot of momentum. If you want to know more about, you know, Stark and the company, check out this one-on-one -on -one that I had with the chief designer, Scott Deloche. Great guy, and it was really fun to talk to him. Let's look at a few features before we dive into sound quality. And yes, I did REW the sub, so if you're a measurement fanatic, then you can go ahead and skip right to that chapter. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and let's see what this sub can do. When you're in the market for a subwoofer, you're obviously going to look at a few different things. How it looks, how it sounds, the features and technology inside the box, as well as the price, of course. We live in a world where we are constantly looking for the best bang for the buck. So at only $8.99 at its highest price, I feel the SW15 is priced right where it needs to be and I'm about to tell you why. Let's go ahead and talk about the look and feel of this subwoofer. The subwoofer arrived well packaged and double boxed. One characteristic that caught me off guard was actually how light the box and unit was. I was able to carry the box myself. At only 55 pounds, it is not a heavy sub, which did make me a bit nervous because I wanted a sturdy, well-built subwoofer. However, I did the knock test and it seemed well insulated on the inside. So at this point, the weight factor turned into a pro because it's not heavy. They kept the enclosure itself quite small for a 15 inch sub, which is also a plus because it makes it easier to place in almost any room. The smooth matte black finish on the MDF enclosure is nice and easy to clean in case you have little ones with, you know, peanut buttery fingers. The black cloth grill is also made, the frame is also made from MDF and has a really cool branded logo of the Brev line, which is where this sub falls under. The Brev line is Stark Sound's reasonably priced offering in comparison to their super high end Halo line, which I will be reviewing in a later video. What is truly eye-catching about this subwoofer though is the glass fiber sandwich cone which has a really cool carbon fiber mesh look to it. This is a sealed enclosure so there aren't any portholes to talk about or to show you which is fine because I actually prefer sealed enclosures. If you want to know the difference between you know, ported and sealed enclosures, check out this video above. And I also have the link in the description below where you can see the difference and you could, you know, explain what's going on between the two. So the rear of the enclosure has a clean and simple amplifier. There isn't any crazy tech back there. Simplicity and ease of use seem to be the approach for the amplification on this unit, which is cool. Moving on to features, as I mentioned, it doesn't have, uh, you know, an app or any type of advanced tech inside. It's just a simple subwoofer. I think Stark wanted people to have bass without the learning curve of having to deal with mobile apps and, and, and a bunch of crazy stuff. They're like, you, you want bass? Well, take it, it's yours. One feature I found absolutely awesome is the XLR input. You won't find that in many subs in this price class. I try to always use XLR. For me, it's more of a reliable connection and on longer runs, it does reduce noise. 
However, I already covered that in a previous video as well. So it sounds like you need to go watch all my other videos. The amplifier is rated at 475 watts RMS. We will definitely put that to the test a bit later during the REW review. It's rated at 14 hertz to 240 hertz, which again, will be tested later in the video to see if it matches up with what they're claiming. I felt the sound was surprising for the price. It hits very deep, and this is just gauging it by ear at this point, mind you. It really delivered. It had a very nice tactile feel to the bass, along with a very responsive delivery. It wasn't sluggish or muddy. It was precise and fast. Exactly how a quality sub should perform. Now, where it really impressed was during the sound test. For my sound tests, I use Ready Player One's racing scene, which I'm beginning to realize a lot of people use that scene as reference just by looking around, which is cool because the movie rocked. However, during the scenes where the bass was absolutely necessary to complete the experience, it did very well, especially during the gorilla scene, which, you know, you'll have to watch it to understand, or if you have watched it, you know what I'm talking about. With music, I wanted to know if this subwoofer would be fast enough for rock, yet deep enough for classic hip hop. We don't listen to that new uh, hip hop stuff in this house. It's not allowed, because it sucks. The SW15 kept up and it did an amazing job with everything I was able to throw its way. Subjectively, it's a win. Let's see how it measured using REW. I love using REW in my reviews because it provides a little bit of science and proof of what my ears are actually hearing However, I am going to give you guys a little disclaimer. These measurements are not done in an anechoic chamber, nor am I using state-of-the-art gear. It's just a near field measurement using a U-mic from Mini DSP and the REW software. Basic. Too many times I have been seeing companies get hit because some enthusiast with a blog decides to do a basement measurement of a piece of gear and people take it as gospel. Stop doing that. There are professional companies that do real measurements using instruments that cost well into the six figures. Don't rely on or make your purchasing decision on some random measurement from some hobbyist on the internet. Now, with that being said, let's see what the measurements told us. Ah, as you can see, it is very strong between 30 and 80 hertz, which is why I was able to hear a lot of that detail from the subwoofer. It didn't waterfall because it is a sealed enclosure, and it did 14 hertz at 90 decibels, so I would say Stark's claims were fair. I like that it did 10 hertz around 75 decibels because that's where that feel is coming from. Overall, these measurements, granted not professional, aligned quite well with what I was hearing, so my overall opinion on the subwoofer is that it's simple looks nice and performed well above expectations. I think the perfect consumer for a subwoofer like this would be someone who wants the best bang for the buck and is looking for some serious bass at an incredibly fair and reasonable price. Thank you all for joining me today. Thanks for making it to the end. I look forward to reviewing Stark's ICH-1 Halo series bookshelf speakers soon. However, I am too busy listening to them than reviewing them so i need to stop that it's not a bad thing my friends it's not a bad thing if you're on facebook i encourage you to check out uh, my group hi-fi audio addiction as well as subscribe to my channel here and smash on that like button if you feel i did a great job thank you again friends and i will see you guys soon very soon take care